How Ukrainian fighters managed to shoot down Russian Su-25s, the instructor pilot explained. Military expert, reserve colonel of the armed forces of Ukraine, instructor pilot Roman Svitan said that the Su-25 is the main tactical attack aircraft that has been operating for a long time, about 40 years. According to him, this aircraft is good from the point of view of groundwork. Svitan noted that this aircraft has 10 hard points so they can use NURS, that is unguided rockets. In general, this is a flying grad, the expert explained for Channel 24. The Ukrainian Armed Forces colonel noted that the Ukrainian air defense does not allow the enemy Su-25 to approach the target at altitudes. Therefore, the Russians must enter at extremely low altitudes, that is, below 30 meters. Also, these attack aircraft mostly fly in pairs. According to Zvitan, at an extremely low altitude, the anti-aircraft missile system does not see the dryers, so the plane fires back 5 kilometers before the line of combat contact. Also, the overwhelming number of Ukrainian manpads can destroy targets at a distance of up to 5 kilometers. However, the expert noted that Ukraine now has more manpads and air defense systems that can reach the Su-25 at extremely low altitudes over long distances. Because of this, Ukrainian troops managed to destroy another Su-25. Recently, soldiers of the 110th Separate Mechanized Brigade shot down a Russian Su attack aircraft. This is the fourth aircraft that the soldiers of this brigade have destroyed since the beginning of May. It was also reported that Ukraine shot down a Russian Tu-22M3 for the first time, as a result of which the assistant commander, Captain Andrei Kononov, was also eliminated. A local Russian newspaper wrote that Kononov died heroically in Ukraine while carrying out a combat mission. Ally of Putin, Poland and Finland will also be ours. Vladimir Solovyov, a Russian propagandist and ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin vowed that two capital cities in member countries of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization will be ours. According to Newsweek, it has been more than two years since Putin launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine on February the 24th, 2022. For months, Ukraine was struggling to fight against Moscow's offensive with a diminished arsenal as U.S. aid stalled in Congress. Last month, President Joe Biden signed a $95 billion foreign aid package, which included roughly $60 billion in military aid for Ukraine after it was approved by U.S. lawmakers. At a joint press conference with Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba in Kyiv, Ukraine, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was asked if the Biden administration was considering relaxing its ban on Ukraine using U.S. weapons in Russian territory. We have not encouraged or enabled strikes outside of Ukraine, but ultimately Ukraine has to make decisions for itself about how it's going to conduct this war. A war it's conducting in defense of its freedom, of its sovereignty, of its territorial integrity, Blinken said. When we will continue to back Ukraine with the equipment that it needs to succeed, that it needs to win. Solovyov recently argued on his Russian TV show that the Ukrainian capital city of Kiev is Russian territory and so is Poland's Warsaw and Finland's Helsinki. Also, most importantly, Blinken brought weapons, but he said it's not allowed to hit Russian territory. And what territory do you hit, you idiots? It's all Russia, Solovyov said in a clip translated into English that was shared on X by Anton Gerashchenko, former advisor to Ukraine's internal affairs minister. Moreover, what about the filthy language he's using in our Russian Kiev? We'll present him with a rent charge for singing all kinds of nonsense in our Russian city. He then directed his attention to one of the guests on his show, Vasil Vakarov, telling him, don't shake your head. That's something new in our Russian city of Kyiv. Vakarov, a political commentator, replied. Solovyov added, whose is it? Kyiv is the mother of Russian cities. Take the old lady back to her motherland. The Ukro Nazis come here, I think, that in another five minutes. Warsaw and Helsinki will also be ours, Russian. And historically, it's all true. Ukraine will receive more long-range missiles, Russians have nowhere to hide. NATO countries are equipping Ukraine with additional long-range, precision-guided missiles. These missiles have already demonstrated their effectiveness in striking Russian airfields, naval headquarters, bridges and other important targets. As Business Insider says, these Western missiles significantly increase Ukraine's firepower. 
Former U.S. military officials said the missiles could help Kyiv hit locations that are critical to Russian operations. Russian forces have nowhere to hide. Ukraine faces a Russian offensive that could intensify by summer, but these weapons could help stop Moscow's efforts. If you're worried about Russian forces breaking your defenses, you need to have your headquarters and logistics under fire control, making Russian attacks impossible, said Ben Hodges, a retired lieutenant general and former commander of U.S. Army Europe. Last month, the U.S. admitted that it had secretly sent long-range ATACMS missiles to Ukraine. The number of missiles is not publicly known, but ATACMS missiles average about $1.3 million each. The Biden administration national security advisor Jake Sullivan said in late April that the U.S. would send more ATACMS to Ukraine. Around the same time, in late April, Britain announced it would send Ukraine additional Storm Shadow cruise missiles as part of the largest weapons package in the country's history. A few days later, British Defence Secretary Grant Shapps revealed for the first time that Italy had also supplied Storm Shadow cruise missiles to Kyiv at one time. France sent Kyiv its own version of the ammunition called Scalp EG. These airdrop missiles can fly at low altitude to avoid detection and have been used to strike Russian Navy headquarters and auto repair depots in Crimea. The 240 km range places them between ATA CMS variants. Increasing the missile arsenal could make it impossible for Russia to station critical assets within 100 miles of its front lines, said Dan Rice a former U.S. Army artillery officer who previously served as a special advisor to Ukraine's military leadership. This puts enormous pressure on all their key high-value targets. You have a front of 1,000 kilometers, then you have a 160 kilometer in depth. Where do you hide everything? Your transport hubs, your railway stations, your supply depots, command. The most important thing, your anti-aircraft systems, Rice said. Hodges and Rice say a larger arsenal of ATA CMS and Storm Shadows could give Ukraine the capabilities to hit high-value Russian targets such as supply depots and maintenance facilities. Indeed, in recent weeks, Kiev has used American missiles to attack Russian airfields and troop concentrations. Missiles like ATA CMS and Storm Shadow will allow Ukraine to neutralize Russia's advantages and ultimately allow it to regain the initiative, Hodges added. Ukraine has also long sought the German Taurus missile, which has a range of more than 160 kilometers than ATA CMS, but Berlin has so far refused to provide it.